you say that you remember that at the conclusion of one of um, the working group meetings, the acting post office head of legal, Chris Oyard, warned me to be careful about what I said. He told me if I said anything that harmed the post office, the post office would not hesitate to take legal action against me under the terms of my non-disclosure agreement. He's an, he came across as an ambitious and, and frankly somewhat aggressive uh, lawyer um, and uh, that was reflected in the way that he dealt with Second Sight to a certain extent. Um, he was obviously concerned about some of the things that I was saying uh, or raising in working group meetings um, and yeah, I, I mean, I remember this, this conversation. I, I thought it was inappropriate and, and to a certain extent somewhat surprising. Um, but um, What had happened to the shared desire to seek the truth irrespective of the consequences? I think we'd moved on from that. Um, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd formed the view that, that quite early on in the process, post officers were getting advice from external lawyers about the financial consequences of what we were finding. Um, the fact that they might be looking at very material amounts of compensation. I remember doing a back of a cigarette packet calculation and I felt that if all of the claims being raised by sub-postmasters through the mediation working group materialised, we were looking at at least £300 million in compensation. That was a huge underestimate. But those were the sort of numbers that I had in mind at this stage. I think that worried post office. Um, they saw it as an existential threat to their business model. Um, they were looking at further funding from government. They were very concerned about the PR aspects of, uh, of their business model. Um, PR was driving a lot of the decisions in post office at this stage. How did you know that? Um, through contact with Mark Davis, who was the head of PR. Um, it, it, was, it was very clear that um, post office senior management uh, were very concerned about the, the public perception, the brand image. Um, I mean, Paula Venels in meetings was, was very open about it. Um, she, she was determined to promote the, the brand of post office. You tell us in your uh, witness statements, no need to turn it up, that protecting the brand was the priority, not supporting the sub-postmasters. You felt that post office had lost its way. Yes, very much so. Paula Venels was increasingly attempting to steer us away from considering the safety of convictions. Um, firstly, what did um, Paula Venels do um, to a, a attempt to steer you away from considering the safety of convictions? Um, I can't remember precisely, but I, I do recall that mediation working group, um, she didn't want... Um, criminal cases involving criminal convictions even to go to the mediation working group. It, the, the terms of the, the mediation working group specifically allowed that to happen. I don't know how hard post office fought behind the scenes to prevent that. Um, and we followed the, uh, the, the terms of reference of, of, the, of the mediation working group, but, but we were aware from P Paula's public comments and feedback from other post office employees that um, they would not support mediation involving um, criminal convictions or, or were very reluctant to do that. When I first met Paula Venels, she told me that the post office was the nation's most trusted brand with a history of over 400 years. As our work continued, I increasingly formed the view that because of its history, post office somehow felt it was above the law and didn't need to comply with, for example, the Criminal Procedure and Investigations Act 1996, which set out disclosure requirements for prosecutors, including those conducting private prosecutions, as was the case with the uh, post office. In what context did Ms. Venels frequently and consistently attempt to steer Second Sight away from investigating potential miscarriages of justice? I mean, first thing I'd say is we had relatively little direct contact with Paula. I mean, she certainly took part in some of the telephone calls, conference calls. Um, the words that I, I, I quoted were made in evidence to the select committee, um, but through um, Angela van der Bogard and so on, uh, and through their actions in terms of, of making documents available, there was clearly a problem in post office mind with uh, the mediation of criminal convictions.